Happy Halloween, everybody. This is Jim Towns. You're listening to the October Country Podcast. Uh, we have wound down to zero. We are at Halloween, uh, my favorite night of the year, and we're going to be talking about what is absolutely one of my favorite films of all time. This is George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. I'm from Pittsburgh. Uh, I have directed a zombie film. Uh, this film is made by another Pittsburgher, uh, and obviously is is the prototype for the modern zombie film. Uh, up till this, most zombie films uh, were either set or, or had some sort of connection to the Caribbean, to West African voodoo or voodoo, um, uh, witch doctors, uh, the older idea of, of, of the zombie. This ushered in something new. Um, there's a kind of debate as to they're never referred to as zombies in this film. They're called ghouls. Uh, they're called monsters. They're called several other things. The word zombie is never articulated within this film. Um, but the general perception of it was that these these were zombies. Um, these were dead people come back to life with the intent of killing and eating living human beings. Um, mindless uh, uh, automatons, basically. Um, and that, that was it. That's, it's, it's, you know, some of the greatest ideas are the simplest ones. This is, this had a very, very basic concept that was, happened to be executed perfectly, (laughs) um, and changed, uh, and changed everything, changed our, you know, pop, pop, modern pop culture, um, it, it affected filmmaking. This very small budget black and white film um, really had an impact. Uh, it was independently produced, independently financed, and and really became a touchstone for what for the direction modern horror was going to go. So there you go. Uh, that's its that's its horror uh, uh, prestige. Um, we can kind of talk about its its social message um, a bit. Uh, the uh, actor cast in the leading role in the film is named uh, his was Dwayne Jones. He's deceased now. Uh, he played Ben. The you know some of the genius of a film like this is maybe lost on some viewers, more modern viewers, younger viewers possibly. Uh, the the iconicness of the decisions made uh, at the time were so daring or adventurous or or chancy uh, now seem kind of mundane. But you have to really take yourself back to 1967 or eight uh, when the film was being produced and made cast. Um, the decision which Romero played down for the rest of his career to make an African American man um, the lead. In a in in a film, uh, not just the lead, but also the, the 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 in charge person who has to stand up against um, the 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 prejudice, and also the the short sightedness of of an older uh, Caucasian man uh, in this struggle of of, of dominance um, within the survival situation. It it goes back to. Uh, sort of the basic of what I think the the thesis on which a film like this uh, uh, revolves, whether it's zombies, ghost ghouls, um, cannibals, uh, terrorist violence, uh, anytime you have this kind of, it's called, it's the Alamo concept where a small bunch of people are stuck in a survival situation in an enclosed environment um, that hinges the horror that, that, uh, you know, that, that, that brings out the, 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 its impact on, on, on the on the audience. Um, inevitably, there's it's a message about us and how humans cooperate in times of, of stress and danger. Um, do we come together? Do we fracture apart? You can make your own assumptions about where we are today in 2018, um, uh, and we'll get into that in just a second. But really the 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 audacity of the filmmakers um of, of having this Ben character who 
uh, is the guy you do want in, to follow in a situation like this. This guy, he's not perfect, but he is in charge. He he has the best plan of what to do. His plans don't always work out, but at least he is the proactive character trying to help everyone get through this. Um, he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about the group. Uh, so you can, again, make, make, the, make the analogies that you want to. Um, but that is something I want to get into is, is where we are currently in, in Western culture, uh, in America, in Britain, in other places, uh, that, are, that are dealing with this idea of, of are, are we better off looking after each and every one of us? Or are we better off, is there some sort of um, what I guess people would call a Darwinian uh, uh, concept, erroneously, uh, <laughs> with nothing to do with what Darwin would have talked about, um, that that the stronger should survive, the weaker should should be left to their own devices. Um, I I think I think the brilliance of a film like this is that it actually instead of dating, instead of uh, its concepts or, or themes becoming antiquated they only become more resonant as, as time goes on oddly enough um and also the you know film is a subjective medium we bring our own uh thoughts feelings concepts uh to the viewing experience of a film and and in doing so we we change what the film's about in our minds to suit what what we're bringing the the context we're coming to it with what I'm trying to say there is is that, you know, uh, this film means something to me. It might mean something to someone else, and it's the same film. But we're bringing uh, our own history and and conceits and prejudices and and preconceived ideas to it, um, and we're forming what it's about to suit what we need. The film itself, Romero's movie here is open enough that it allows for that. It, it, it's not a film that tells you what you're supposed to be thinking, what you're supposed to be feeling um, it, uh, during the viewing experience. It, it leaves that open and it allows for personal interpretation. And I think that's the reason why it is as, as it, it feels prescient to, to us now watching it that, that some of these themes are still, unfortunately, um, very viable, very very current. But I think that's that's the the intentional brilliance of it is is that it allows itself to be a metaphor for whatever you're bringing or whatever you're experiencing at the moment when you watch it. I think that's it's part of its genius. The other genius is this documentary style filmmaking. Romero and his company at the time were um, uh, did a lot of commercial work. They did uh, some documentary work. They did a lot of industrial films uh, for companies. They were a small crew and they were they had this sort of aggressive approach to to a lot of stuff they film. If you watch some of their other work previously, this their business work uh, previously to this more you know creative enterprise. Um, and bringing that to this the way it's shot, the the sometimes unnecessary cuts, uh, uh, you know, thematically or, or, or logically, serve to push the anxiety and tension along. Um, incredibly beautiful lighting, um, very compelling performances by 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 all the by the cast at all, uh, uh, and 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 just a unique, really interesting um, setting. That in this in this little farmhouse that that really keeps the the story going along. Um, I'm going to count down three, two, one to spoilers. So three, two, one. If you haven't seen the film all the way through, you should probably possibly uh, uh, <laughs> stop listening now and watch the film, and then come back and listen to this part of it. Um, the ending, where the Ben character. Uh, uh, the next day, zombies are, have been mostly killed by by police and National Guard, um, more or less roving bands of white dudes with guns, um, living out sort of the fantasy, I guess you could call it. The ironic moment at the end where, where Ben comes up from the basement, uh, being the only person left alive, um, to see the rescuers coming over the hill and then is shot by mistake 
by these men uh, because they assume he's he's one of the dead. Um, that up, upon watching it again just this you know just a few days ago, a few evenings ago, um, that really hit me. I mean, that's what could be more pertinent right now than than this this young black man killed uh, needlessly by because of an assumption that he's dangerous. Um, uh, and the ending bits, the the way it's portrayed with these these strange grainy still frames, um, almost like it's a documentary, almost almost like it's a news article, um, uh, that that I think a lot of us have become so used to seeing. Uh, just, um, yeah, the resonance of that really really hits and 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 serves to. I mean, maybe maybe the real horror is that that this is still a reality um so many you know 40 some years later uh is this is still something that our culture is still is still dealing with um and maybe maybe again among uh, many many other things maybe that's part of the film's enduring legacy so uh so that's tonight's film uh kind of ended up on a sober note and apologies for that because uh this is a, a wonderful day of the year for me uh and something i really enjoy but uh uh not to uh, over overtake the sheer brilliance and enjoyment that is this this wonderful film directed by a very unassuming modest genius george a romero um who being lucky enough to have met once or twice um was always the first to downplay his own contribution to 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 horror filming myth making and film in general but without whom i think the landscape of of what i do and what so many uh, people i know uh, enjoy would be drastically drastically different uh along with this uh, film obviously dawn of the dead day of the dead um, martin Night Riders, which if you haven't seen Night Riders, geez, just give it a shot. It's it's wonderful. Um, all the way up to uh, uh, you know more the, the recent zombie films and the dark half. Uh, just a just an uncompromising independent filmmaker who never allowed um, what the money bags or society uh, uh, at, at you know you know so called pop society uh, tell him what stories he were worth telling and were not worth telling uh he chose for himself and we're all the benefits of that so that's tonight's film that's this year's october country podcast i hope you enjoyed it i hope you uh it uh, was worth sitting through this much longer uh, final episode um uh, and uh thank you for everybody who's been listening along i really appreciate it we're going to be coming back next year with some more stuff, uh, thanks to Shadow Camera Films and uh, and and some some help from outside uh, uh, benevolent sources. So, stay tuned. Thanks very much. Good night.